Hello everyone, back again with Story Recap. Before we get to storyline, I wish all happy and great day. The movie commences with a lively gathering at the residence of Dean and Bunny, where numerous couples are in attendance. The women are engaged in a game where they skillfully balance trays bearing glasses of liquor on their heads, with Bunny emerging as the victor. Simultaneously, another couple, Alice and Jack, slip away from the party and embark on a spontaneous drive, during which they engage in some thrilling donuts with Jack's car. On the following day, Alice takes on the role of preparing breakfast for Jack, and their relationship appears to be idyllic. This couple, along with their circle of friends, resides in a community reminiscent of the 1950s known as Victory Town. In this charming setting, the wives all bid farewell to their husbands as they depart for work simultaneously, heading to Victory headquarters situated in the desert. Ostensibly, their occupations are centered around the realm of technology. Meanwhile, Alice remains at home, passing her time in the company of Bunny and the other wives. Alice participates in a dance class instructed by Shelley, who happens to be the wife of Frank, the founder of the Victory Project. During one of the classes, they warmly welcome Violet, a newcomer to the community, as her husband Bill has joined the other men in working at the headquarters. The entire community gathers at Frank and Shelley's residence for a party, during which they discuss the next steps in the Victory Project. Among the attendees, a woman named Margaret voices her concerns, suggesting that they shouldn't be present. Her husband, Ted, swiftly escorts her away to prevent any potential disturbance. Meanwhile, other women in the community share whispers about Margaret's troubled past, mentioning an incident where she had taken her son into the desert and he subsequently vanished. Margaret believes her child was taken from her before she was rescued. While the party continues, Alice briefly steps back into the house, where she encounters Jack, and they share an intimate moment. Unbeknownst to them, Frank discreetly enters the room, observing the situation. Alice notices Frank's presence, but Jack remains oblivious to it, as Frank quietly exits the room. Subsequently, Alice boards a trolley that takes her out of town and into the desert. While on the trolley, she gazes up at the sky, and notices an airplane that appears to be descending and crashing into the mountainside near Victory HQ. Disturbed by the sight, Alice urges the trolley driver to head in that direction, but he informs her that it's not part of his designated route. Undeterred, Alice decides to continue on foot, ascending the mountain in search of the crashed plane. However, when she reaches the spot, instead of finding the aircraft, she encounters what seems to be a mirror. As she touches the mirror's surface, she is engulfed by unsettling imagery of blood droplets and women dancing in eerie synchronization, all while hearing the voice of Frank. The scene then shifts, and Alice awakens in her own bedroom, with Jack explaining that she had been home for hours when he returned. Strangely, Alice has no recollection of how she made it back home. Alice receives a phone call from Margaret, who inquires about the plane incident that Alice witnessed. Despite Alice's denial, Margaret pleads with her not to cut off communication. Later, Alice stumbles upon Margaret perched on the roof of her house. Concerned, she rushes to Margaret's aid. But Margaret locks eyes with her and tragically inflicts a self-inflicted throat cut before falling from the rooftop. Soon after, men clad in red suits arrive, intervening by separating Alice from the scene and attending to Margaret's lifeless body. Jack contacts Dr. Collins, asking him to visit their home and assess Alice's condition. Dr. Collins, upon his arrival, mentions that Margaret required stitches, aligning with the explanation that she had fallen while cleaning her window. However, Dr. Collins surmises that Alice is in need of rest due to exhaustion. As Alice patiently waits for a moment when both Jack and Dr. Collins are not paying attention, she seizes the opportunity to delve into Dr. Collins's bag. Within it, she discovers a file concerning Margaret, ominously labeled Security Risk. The file contains extensive redactions, leaving little useful information, prompting Alice to decide to incinerate the document. Alice begins to experience unsettling and inexplicable phenomena. In the midst of her dance class, she witnesses a disturbing vision of Margaret violently shattering her own reflection in the mirror leading to an alarming outburst in front of the class. Back at home, Alice attempts to prepare eggs, only to discover that the eggshells are completely hollow and devoid of any content. During a bath, as she submerges herself in the water, her reflection in the bathtub appears to take on an eerie life of its own, making for a disconcerting experience. Alice and Jack attend a significant event hosted by Frank, with all the other couples in attendance. During the gathering, Frank invites Jack onto the stage, where he proudly announces Jack's promotion to work with the Senior Advisory Board. The crowd erupts in applause, 
and Frank initiates a chant of, Whose world is this? Ours. Meanwhile, Alice steps aside and encounters Bunny. Alice attempts to express her concerns that something is amiss, but Bunny urges her to refrain from making hasty assumptions. Subsequently, Alice and Jack decide to host a dinner, extending invitations to Frank and Shelley, Bill and Violet, as well as another couple, Peg and Peter. While gathered around the dining table, Alice begins to raise several observations she's made, such as the women sharing remarkably similar stories about how they met their respective husbands. She also notes that a significant number of the women originate from cities like Philadelphia, Chicago, or Baltimore. During the dinner, Alice openly accuses Frank of being involved in something suspicious, prompting Shelley to reprimand her. However, in a private conversation, Frank confides in Alice, revealing that he had actually hoped for someone like her to challenge him. Alice confronts Jack about the troubling situation and implores him to leave with her. Jack appears to be in agreement and they manage to reach their car. However, their escape is abruptly halted when the men in red suits arrive and forcibly remove Alice from the vehicle. She cries out and pleads with Jack to come to her aid, but he can only sit in the car, overwhelmed with remorse and unable to intervene. Alice is subsequently transported to a hospital where a mysterious procedure is carried out on her. A flashback unfolds, revealing Alice's past as a nurse working at a hospital. In this flashback, she is depicted living in a rundown apartment with Jack. Their relationship becomes strained as Alice's demanding work schedule leaves her exhausted and uninterested in spending time with Jack. During this period, Jack becomes engrossed in Frank's motivational speeches which initially ignite his inspiration to join the Victory Project. As the narrative unfolds, it becomes clear that the Victory Project is a virtual simulation designed to keep wives trapped, serving the needs and desires of their husbands. Furthermore, it is disclosed that when Alice touched the mysterious mirror, she was, in fact, attempting to awaken herself from this virtual reality, but Jack intervened to ensure she remained within the simulation. Jack, in the process, lies beside Alice, while his own consciousness becomes linked to the Victory Project, thus entangling their lives in this intricate web. Within the confines of the Victory simulation, Alice appears to return after a seemingly successful healing process by the virtual doctors. However, a heated argument ensues between Alice and Jack, with Jack asserting that he has orchestrated everything for her, despite the fact that she was content leading her own life with independence in the real world. Jack holds onto her, and in a desperate attempt to break free, Alice shatters a glass filled with liquor over Jack's head, resulting in his demise within the virtual realm, and shockingly, in reality as well. This shocking incident prompts the higher-ups in the community to take notice, leading to a series of disturbances, such as street bulbs suddenly bursting. Bunny, who has known the truth all along, confides in Alice, revealing that not even her own children within the virtual world are real. Encouraged by Bunny, Alice decides to take Dean's car and drive to the headquarters, with the intent of putting an end to the ongoing ordeal. Alice races into the desert, pursued by the menacing individuals in red suits. Dr. Collins also joins in the chase, but Alice abruptly slams on the brakes, causing a collision that results in the demise of several of the red-suited pursuers. More vehicles join the pursuit as Alice heads towards the mountain. Simultaneously, Frank becomes aware of Alice's actions, leading to a shocking turn of events. Shelley, in a fit of anger, stabs Frank in the abdomen, condemning him for his failure to maintain control over the situation. She proclaims, it's my turn now, as she takes charge of the unfolding events. Alice's car becomes lodged on the mountainside, obstructing her path upwards and leaving her vulnerable. The red-suited pursuers commence their ascent, inching closer to her. In a moment of desperation, as she approaches the enigmatic mirror, Alice briefly senses the presence of Jack behind her, urging her to remain for his sake. She sprints toward the mirror just as the red suits draw near. The scene then fades to black, with the final sound being Alice's gasp as she awakens in the real world. Don't forget to support me with the like and subscribe buttons. Stay tuned for more film recaps.